Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can extract a field value from a record. As you can see, the first column in my table contains records. And when I click off to the side in the white space, I can see a preview of that record down below. Let's say I want to extract a single value from this record, and I don't want to expand the entire record first. So let's say I want to retrieve the name. To retrieve a single value from the record, I can use a function called record.field. So let's add a custom column, enter the M function, point to column one that contains our records, and identify the field that we want to access. All we have to do is pass its name as a text value. So that field was called name, so add a closing parenthesis and press OK. As you can see, we've now extracted all those field values. Instead of a function, however, I can also use a field access operator to select a value from a record. So again, let's add a custom column. First, we'll reference the column containing the record. And to access the field, all I need to do is enter the field name inside square brackets. So opening square bracket, enter name. That's the name of the field value that I want to retrieve. Add a closing square bracket and press OK. As you can see, this gets me exactly the same result. Now, what happens if my field name doesn't exist? So I'll just change this into name one and press OK. I now get an error. To avoid that, all I have to do is add a question mark at the end. So add a question mark and press OK. Basically, I'm now asking if my field name exists. And if it doesn't, I don't get the error, but I get a null value instead. Let's change this back. Perfect. OK, but how can I extract a record field value if my records are nested inside a list? And again, I don't want to extract the list and those records first. Well, in that case, I can also use the item access operator to select an item based on its zero based position within the list. Let's explore both methods that we used before. Now, the goal for the first row in the table is to access the first item from the list for the second row, the second item and so on. At this time, I don't have a field in my table to identify the zero based position of the item that I want to access. However, it's quite easy to create that helper column. All we need is an index that starts from zero. Add an index column from zero. Let's add a custom column. and enter the M function. We'll point to the column that contains our list, so that's column two. And for the position inside curly brackets, we can pass our index column. Don't forget the closing curly bracket, a comma, and again, we have to pass the field name as a text value. So name, closing bracket and press OK. Instead of the function, we can also use that combination of item and field access operators to achieve the same result. So let's add a custom column. 
will point to the column that contains the lists. So that's column number two. Inside those curly brackets, we can access the item, right? The position is in the index column, curly bracket. And inside those square brackets, we enter the field and we want to access the field called name. Closing square bracket and press OK. So we've seen two methods for extracting a record field value. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.